I don't know what it was. He's walking upright like a man. Sightings in and around Vermont. Bigfoot sightings across New England have been reported. Red glowing eyes, about seven feet tall. Red eyes, big old fang claws coming out through, three inches long, you know, just sharp as they could be. There has been another UFO sighting flying over the Royal Botanic Gardens. There are 500 UFO sightings in the world every month. The truth is out there. So, Brandon. So, um, John. In our podcast Discord. Yes. Somebody was talking about the two horny episodes from last year. Do you remember them? For, like, it's, I, one of them it's was. It's been a hot minute. So, so one of them was Cougar mentioned... Island. Someone brought Cougar Island, and someone brought up, um, I forget what the other horny episode was. It was the one before Cougar Island. I don't remember what the name of that episode was. Yeah. Um, so, they mentioned a particular SCP, and this is, uh, Vivian? What's right? that one called? Because I Viviana. see it around, but I yeah, forget what it's so called. That, that SCP is called SCP-1471, Okay. Um, and I'm going to send you the original SCP article for it. Okay. But basically, basically what it is, it's an app, right? So the concept is it's an app that says you'll never be alone again or something along those lines. Yeah. Oh, uh, never quick. settle for those awkward feelings of being alone. What? Let, let, let's explain what SCP is because oh, not it's, everyone it's might... A... It, it's uh, didn't, people didn't listen to my didn't listen to my SCP episode that I did years ago. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, so SCPs are, SCP is a like wiki of various horror short stories set in the same in a shared like reality yeah. sort of, but like also not because it's like very it's complicated. I'm not gonna get into it, all the intricacies of SCP. Yeah, but. It stands for Secure, Contain, Protect, and what they do is they document and then try to contain various um, anomalies, right? Yes. And so this particular one is an app, actually. So the, the picture is a side effect of the anomaly. Oh, okay. I the, never the actually picture read is, this. It's a 9.8 megabyte the, application that's free for mobile devices. Named Mal O mm-hmm. version one dot zero dot zero. Yeah. So basically, basically, what it is is just an app that says you'll never be alone again. But the way that it happens is it starts taking pictures of where you are right now, and like sending you those pictures to be like you're not you're not alone. Oh, and that's then good. over time, over time, uh, SCP one four seven one A, um shows up and is like actually like shows up in your feet like it starts showing up in the pictures and then it shows up in your um, yeah so at 1471-a either in the background or foreground of pictures scp1471-a appears as a large humanoid figure with a canid like skull and black hair yeah yes sweet so this is a cool one i like this one i, I gotta it, it scrub is, these again it is cool it is cool, but Brandon, Brandon, John, conservatively, how much porn do you think exists of this creature? So looking at this picture, my first thought, I want the answer to be none, but it's the internet. So I want to say it's relegated to um, uh, uh, not, all right, here's, not, here's not the Pinterest, th- but like fan art style stuff. But So Brandon... I, I want you to guess in terms of rule thirty four dot like rule thirty four the website. I want to say the, that, how many pages? I want to say there's three pages of rule thirty four. Oh my sweet summer child! Oh no, hang on, my sweet summer child! I'm sending 34. you the link. Oh god, I'm sending you the link. I I looked this up beforehand because I knew I knew there was a there's lot of porn eleven of this creature. pages. 11 there pages. are 11 pages of porn about this, like, lycanthrope with a canine skull. There's so many. And here's the thing. Here's the thing, Brandon. You're into it? No. It, it's, oh, this is this is it giving someone a blowjob. Yep, okay. I see that one. That's the bottom right. 
There's... Yeah. Um. So so. <laughs> basically, it's got to be so toothy. So toothy. Oh, it's incredibly toothy because it's a fucking wolf skull. Yeah. Oh. But, yeah. I. I. So funny story about this. I actually knew about that. Oh, there's a fur suit. Somebody made a fur suit. Yeah, I find it interesting the ones where it incorporates other people, because frequently there's almost no detail to the other character. Oh well, that's Looking just it. porn. Yeah, like that's just porn. Like, but um, so I have a theory about this. Well, I'm happy my daughter's gonna find this on my search history one day. She will. She'll find <laughs> at us talking about it one day. I was thinking about that. And then I was like, I definitely want to bring this up now. <laughs> Perfect. Um, but I have a theory. So that SCP has two things going for it. One, it's a lycanthrope. So it's it's yeah. already an anthro character. Two, it's spooky as fuck. It Actually, is spooky. there's three things. It's spooky. And three, it just literally doesn't leave you alone. So it's got that kind of like Yandere vibe. Those three oh. things combined is what made like it's like it's like the perfect lightning rod for porn to get made of it. I just had the best movie idea. It's gonna be one of those Nick Cage movies that he picks up. So one, Nick Cage has been making a lot of smaller, weird movies that are all fantastic because it turns out a, he just dude. he reads the script and if he likes it, he makes it. That's what freaking um the the Five Nights at Freddy one uh was. Oh uh, yeah, the that that was that one was fucking amazing. I loved it. I I I I three sixty on Nick Cage. At first, I didn't. I I was not liking him. Now I'm like I I love him. Um. So we're oh, gonna... I've I've Brandon Brandon. I I want to I want to put this out there. I have never not never not loved Nicolas Cage. Yeah, that, that... he has so... always been my favorite because he. It's like that that joke from Community. Is Nicolas Cage good or bad? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Is the answer. Yes. So here's what yes we're gonna do. We're gonna answer. write a script and give it to Nick Cage. And here's the the the, the movie premise. It's SCP one four seven one, but we're going to um like the whole like oh no I'm not trapped in here with you. You're trapped in here with me kind of thing, right? Because the thing about SCP one four seven one is. It can't not watch you. Well, well, so. <laughs> <laughs> and it's the whole movie is like t- halfway through. We M Night Shyamalan, Shyamalan had ding dong this thing. And, and just where Literally. it's just like shaking in a corner, terrified because of just the things that we're doing. I mean, if, if SCP, if that particular SCP ends up like stalking somebody who's into it it's gonna be upset. exactly exactly although although the thing is the thing about that is like in the scp like um lore it says that it's like trying to communicate with them or something along those yeah. lines because it's, it's like uh... not hostile right it's it's not yeah it's just I'm, like kind of uh, chill i'm obsessed with this idea so maybe now. but brandon brandon Maybe SCP-1471 just wants someone to be that weird. Maybe. Uh, Maybe she just wants to twist. find her person. Double twist, right? Twist one, it, it switches from horror to like you trying to weird out the monster. Twist two, monster totally into it and just starts cranking it in the corner. Like it's... Well, and oh. then... Well, it's a it's a she. Is that cranking? I guess. I guess. I don't know I mean, the genitalia I mean, situation. The, sh- the, sh- the diddly, diddly, diddly bops. Uh, well, I mean, I don't know the genitalia situation of SCP. That's, yeah, we, well, I mean, I can we guess based off that that stuff you just showed me. The, Brandon, there is more than there is more than one genital situation for S- uh, SCP. Yeah. The only thing is, they're they're they consider themselves their their pronoun is she her. The only thing we know about SCP-1471 is it wants you to pull the anal beads out like you're trying to start a lawnmower. Yes. (laughs) That's the implication. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, this is a strong start if you're just joining us for the first time. 
Uh, I I look forward to your uh, your daughter one day being like, "Hey, Dad, what's ripping anal beads out like starting a lawnmower?" So I used to work at a place where my friend's mom was the manager, and one morning she came up to me and said, "What's up, you cake?" And that's when <laughs> I had to say, uh, "Ask your son." <laughs> What's a bu cake? And, like, is that half moment pause, and then it's like, oh, how do I answer it? And the answer is, you don't. You defer. No. You definitely defer. Oh yeah. So uh, I guess with that, welcome everyone to Cryptopedia, an exploration of the myths and legends that haunt the human mind. Each week, we will take you on a journey exploring the mysteries of the world, tackling the tales of monsters, folklore, the paranormal, and that thing that definitely lives under your bed. I'm Brandon. I'm John, and I want to point out, Brandon. Yes. That discussion that we just had, completely on brand. So I don't want to hear anything from anyone about, oh, you took uh you took fucking ten minutes to get to the introduction, but blah 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 blah. Fuck you. We're talking about things that haunt the human mind, because that's been haunting my mind. That is haunting the human mind. Also, there's for 106 episodes, we've started the first ten minutes. <laughs> Talking about random BS. That's on you. <laughs> a lot of the time, a lot of the time, a lot of the time, it gets sexy. It gets very sexy. Oh, talking about sexy, I got some early birthday presents from Erica, and she got me, it's in the other room, but Sumo Kitty, a children's book for babies to teach them about sumo wrestling and, like, proper terminology, and it's great. It's a kitty cat that, like, oh my God. starts c- mimicking what the sumo res- wrestlers do and eventually uses sumo to get rid of all the, the mice in the, in the dojo. And I got some more I, signed uh, handprints. Oh, those are fucking dope. Yeah, they're awesome. Nice. They're, they're great. The uh, So why does the the cat the sumo kitty not just murder all the mice with its teeth? Um, bec- because it's a children's book, John. <laughs> For children. But but Brandon, I don't understand. Why not just murder? I know. Oh, and the kitty start it also starts stealing the sumo. So there All right, no, I I'm going to not go down this rabbit hole. I'm just going to post all of it into my special channel that's just for me in our Discord later. <laughs> <laughs> there's, I made a ch- I just realized I'm an admin. So now there's a channel that's just me posting stuff where if you're bored, it, just go in and click on stuff. And then guaranteed you'll go down a YouTube rabbit hole on like the suggested oh, no. videos that show up in any of those. Um, Didn't you say I like was it did you start it with I just realized I have admin access or did you call it that originally? It was originally it Brandon just remembered he has admin access and make can make okay. his own channel and then I renamed it to Brandon's Boredom Corner because that's a little bit more it makes more sense. There's a lot of great mm-hmm. stuff. There's a 10 hour video of the DVD screensaver and a timestamp for every time it hits the corner perfectly. Um oh. found that doing a, a overnight shift on baby duty um anyway today we're talking about the u28 monster uh the monster itself is described as a large crocodile looking thing about 60 feet long with webbed feet and a long tapered snout um it gets its name this time not from a like a region like they commonly are it's not like um like the bladenboro beast from bladenboro that's a future episode um this time it's named after spoilers the, the type of submarine uh that of which the captain was piloting who who first saw it um so it's the u-28 monster because the captain who saw it was piloting a u-28 submarine um uh, okay so this sighting happened uh, also there's only one sighting ever and um this is also, i'm unsurprised there's a great episode um because like the last one we did with the dybbuk box we have a definitive origin. Are you fucking kidding me? No. And it's it's the best origin. It's I was so happy while I was writing this. I, I It was a twist ending for me, too, because I didn't... It, well, we'll, 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 we'll get to it. Um, so this hiding happened on July 31st, 1915, off the coast of Ireland, near Fastnet, where the SS Iberian... Ab- I didn't realize that U-boats... The uh, submersible boats. It's a submersible boat, right? It, yeah. It's early submarines. Yeah, a German submarine. U-boat. I didn't. I did not realize those existed in 1915. 
I didn't realize they existed by Ireland, <laughs> which I mean, I should have expected well, in that, that it's in the UK, but, uh, uh, well, but I mean, existing near Ireland, I can expect you got to keep an eye on the Irish. There's oh, they're a shady bunch. Um, mm-hmm. uh, so yeah, so the, it's a merchant ship heading from Manchester to Boston, um, and it was nine miles off the coast when it was struck by a torpedo. The torpedo came from our U-28 submarine, the SM-28, a U-27 class submarine, um, with a career of 40 sinkings and two prize captures. The captain uh, of the vessel was Captain Lieutenant Freiherr George Gunther Kretsch von For- Forstner. And for the rest of the episode, I'm not saying that whole thing. I'm just going to pick Aww. one of those and call him by that. So if you ever hear me say Captain Forster or Kretsch or whatever, it's all this goofy looking Captain guy. Lieutenant, Captain Lieutenant Freiherr. Freiherr George Gunther Kretsch von Forstner. Nice. <laughs> the duchest of names. Um, he the also duchess. looks like... It's not Dutch. Oh, ger- it's German. He looks like he That's would operate. That's super German. He looks like he operates a soda fountain. If you're trying to, uh, if you're not reading our our copy with us, which is all. Uh, do we are yeah. those still available? Do we do we do that? Yeah, I upload yeah. them. I upload them to the Patreon every week. Okay. Um, I will say at the very least, he's not uh, 1930s to 1940s German. So there's that. He's got that going for him. <laughs> he's got that going for him so far. Like. That's already a positive in his in his like boat, his U boat, so to speak. Yeah. Um. So it was not long after the sinking of the SS Iberian that von Foster would have the only sighting of the U twenty eight creature. It sounds like there's not a U twenty eight creature. It sounds like he saw he saw he had he drank a little too much salt water to me. There's. It's not that we know what it is. So the wreckage remained beneath the water for approximately twenty five seconds at a depth that remains clearly impossible to assess, when suddenly there was a violent explosion um, which shot pieces of debris, among them a giant aquatic animal, out of the water to a height of approximately eight feet, saying that, quote, At the moment, I had with me uh, in the conning tower six of my officers on watch, including the chief engineer, the navigator, the helmsman. Uh, Simultaneously, we all drew one another's attention to uh, this wonder of the seas, which is writhing and struggling among the debris. We were unable to identify the creature, but all of us had agreed that it resembled an aquatic crocodile, which is about 60 feet long with four limbs resembling large webbed feet, a long pointed tail, and a head which also tapered to a point. Unfortunately, we were not able to take a photograph. Oh, sad face. Um, For the animal sank out of sight after 10 or 15 seconds. And of course, it took like twenty minutes to take a photo. No, it didn't. Yeah, it, this it, is after Durotype. This is after Durotypes. That's um. That's the entirety of the sighting. That's it. So, so I want. I'm curious. I'm very curious about okay. the language used here. An aquatic crocodile, Brandon. Aren't they all? I I felt I feel like they're all aquatic, but so, I could be wrong. I want to say he was implying that. It looked like a crocodile, but not one that could only be in water. Like, it didn't have the ability to do landy stuff. That's fair. I mean, that might not have translated. That that could make sense. I could see that. That that would that would make sense. Yeah, like, it's relegated because, purely to, to the sea. Just because, like, crocodiles are aquatic. Crocs do that water stuff. Mm-hmm. Just ask, uh, just ask, um... What's his name? Croc. Kelly he's, Croc? He's dead now. Oh, yeah. Steve, Steve Irwin. Irwin. Yeah. In, uh, I, uh, that reminds me. I watched a show on HBO Max called Teenage Fantasia. Yeah. Youth, te- teenage Euthanasia. It's about a woman who like has a kid, abandons the kid with her family in Florida at a... Um, at a, like... Uh, funeral home. Yeah. And she gets basically married to a Hugh Hefner type, gets replaced by two more younger people. She then dies and shows back up at the, the funeral home and her daughter cries for the first time in her life 
during a lightning storm while she's getting embalmed <laughs> and it what? lands in her mouth and she comes back as a zombie but like a fully like sentient existing zombie and like more or less fully like realize huh it's fucking hilarious and it makes so much fun of of Florida it's amazing That's, oh there's also cro- cro- uh is it no not Florida Anyway, so Crocodile Dundee um, can never leave Australia because he's wanted in multiple countries for tax evasion. Uh, Are we talking about the original t- Crocodile Dundee, like the actual guy? The who's... actual guy, like from like yeah. from like the first movie. Um, El- Wait, no, the actor, the actor, or the actor? The, okay, the actor, I, not not the I character think... Crocodile Dundee, the well, actor who plays well, the character Crocodile Dundee. You know, Crocodile Dundee is based on a real person. I did not. Yeah, he is. Oh, um, um, real quick, I have a correction from our uh, a comment I made on a previous episode. Post Malone's parents do not own the Dallas Cowboys. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't know where I got that information from, <laughs> but it is yeah. uh, false. As I was uh, uh, warned in the Discord. Also, if you don't jo- join, get hop in the Discord. It's free. Just it's terrible. Out. It's terrible. But you, there's. I consider it like free extra content or whatever. Um, um. So the name of the guy who Crocodile Dundee was based off of was called Rod Ansel. He lived from 1954 to 1999 and died at age 44. What did he die of? There was something I don't remember. It's a uh, police shootout. Ah, <laughs> that's pretty. That makes yeah. I'm not surprised. Um. Uh, there's no doubt that Ansel was affected by amphetamine inge- intoxication prior to his fatal interaction with Sergeant Hoots- Hootson. Ansel's behavior was prior to the initial shots of being fired was consistent with amphetamine intoxication <laughs> with restlessness, <laughs> hypervigilance, anxiety, anger, and impaired judgment. DSM IV. Uh, the whole that's not a knife scene makes so much more sense because he was on amphetamines. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, uh, good. Apparently, he had a shared psychosis. Um, a folle adieu. Um, it's possible that one or both of the parties had underlying vulnerability to mental illness, which enhanced and sustained the regular use of amphetamines. <laughs> Look at us. We're educational. Um, I heard about it on, I think, the dollop. Edutainment. Oh, I've been falling behind on that. I'm behind too. Yeah, they called him a modern, modern Robertson Caruso, Robinson Caruso, but then he, like, had problems <laughs> to say the least so yeah a common theory about what it could have been is another living dinosaur specifically the, fuck off the mosasaurus <laughs> fuck off <laughs> this seems to be more based off its description than the than like a young earth creationist plot like a lot of the living dinosaur theories are um honestly brandon i just don't i think you didn't dig deep enough there's i'm if, like you didn't dig deep enough because uh, i can guarantee i can guarantee that there is a young earth creationist blog or article written about how the u28 monster is like proof positive that the earth is young there 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 are some but they're not it's not like a strong see no one's really grabbing onto it um because i did try to look for stuff to piss you off but nothing um with substantial enough following that I could send you down a rage rabbit hole. Uh, which Mosasaurus is cool, though. Is why I exist, is just to send you down a rage... Yeah, he's eating like a chorizo right there. Um, um, I don't think that's a chorizo. I believe that's a squid. Chorizo of the sea. Are, are squids chorizo of the sea? Squids are chorizo of the sea. Chorizo's delicious. And I recently yeah. discovered how delicious chorizo is because how, how are you at thirty discovering that they're delicious? <laughs> I don't know, Brandon. <laughs> it, it's one of those things where, like, well, I think I probably had chorizo before, but I didn't realize I had it. I just assumed it was regular sausage. No, it's different sausage. Yeah, no, it is, but like, you know. I just thought it was like a spicy sausage. It's also perfect for like breakfast burritos to like chop up and and get in there with them eggs. See, I don't understand breakfast burritos, which is not like I've never understood it. I'm a I'm a cereals type person for breakfast. Ah, yeah. See, I just don't like milk that much. 
I like grains for breakfast. Yeah, those grains are always good. Been having living next to a McDonald's. Been having lots of that for breakfast. That uh, seems problematic. It's, although I just had McDonald's literally yesterday. Yeah, so. I'm still packing on the baby weight. Uh, so the Mosasaurus fossils we have today are about the size of the creature described by the captain, which is kind of cool. Roughly 63 to 67 feet long. The Mosasaurus itself was also a very croc-like uh, creature in appearance, uh, from its long, narrow head to its skin texture. There are, however, some holes in the story of the captain that would lead some to become more suspect. First, What do you mean? I, I literally... Brandon, that paragraph, uh, that, those two paragraphs, watertight. Airtight. Because you know what? You know what? He is the pilot of a submarine. The, so he knows how to make things airtight. Yeah. So we're gonna gonna we're gonna freeze that comment in time, the little watertight thing, and we'll circle back to it in a bit. Um He's watertight. It's watertight. I so, I already know. It's f- that's the answer. First, let's go back to the U twenty eight and what happened moments after the Iberian sank. The creature leapt out of the water and landed on the ship. It damaged the U-boat uh, foredeck and turret enough that it began taking on water and was unable to dive. Uh, wait. Wait, the, this is the U-28. The U-boat that... sank. The U-boat they were on. Yeah, so it, the creature leapt from the sea, damaged the submarine, and caused the submarine to eventually sink. Okay, I was confused. I, I, it, I, I it, was confused. It, it, it is a little bit confused. Okay. It, it took me... Um, I didn't realize it sank for a little bit too while I was doing um, the research on this. Um, as okay. the sun rose the morning after Royal Navy ship, um, the Coropsis, which I assume is Latin meaning something, um, approached the U-28 and found the crew all standing on the deck waving their arms ready to be captured, or in this case, more like rescued. The first ca- it's the name of It's the name of a flower... Huh. The tick seed. Okay. Apparently that's a thing. I, don't, I wouldn't want to be on a warship named after a flower. Like I want it's something... a perennial flower. Yeah. That, uh, I, yeah, that's, like, we, like, name it after a Sikorsky, like, the King Stallion is the name of, like, a, a Sikorsky helicopter. Uh, like, give it a cool name. The Italian name. Stallion? No, not the Italian Stallion. That's uh, the name of um, something sexy. Um, so the first curiosity is, why had no one else reported the monster? Von Fosner was what the you- only crew member who claims he saw the creature from the tower. Uh, le- he was the only one that survived the war. So of the six individuals he listed also having seen it, He's mm-hmm. the only one that lived. I mean, that's pretty standard for these types of stories. Uh, He's the boy who lived. Yeah. But, like, is he more problematic or less problematic than Harry Potter? Is he? Well, Harry Potter is a fictional character. Well, well, no, no. I'm saying that because of J.K. Rowling. Uh, she's still on her, uh, her, her, her streak. <laughs> yeah, but, like, she's still, is, still being is, turfy. Which which boy who lived is more problematic, though? Um, I don't probably, know. Probably, I, I, I mean, I, he's a German in 1915. Like, he sank 40 ships. He's, but J.K. Rowling, like, her, her, she ha- has affected far more people. Because don't forget, like, people would be waiting outside of, there'd be a line, like, people trying to buy the true. new iPhone. That's true. To get her damn, but, like, she wrote a book and bought a castle. So her reach yeah. is far more significant. So, but the question then becomes: Is it more? Is because her reach is more pro, uh, is more significant? She's more problematic, or is are the actions that the shipboat captain conducted more problematic? That's the question. See, the, the problem is, I'm not my. I don't have my finger in that community. That's not the way to word that. I'm not in touch enough to know to the, the significance and extent to which her comments have affected people. Um, I mean, it's pretty significant. It's, like, the fact that people, like, pretend that she doesn't exist as the author of Harry Potter and, like, make that joke, like, Harry Potter just came into existence. Yeah. Yeah, like, so the, the question becomes, did she harm 
And it's entirely possible because of her reach that she could have potentially hurt more people to the same extent that a German submarine captain in World War I could have. It is possible. Like it's it's, it's not out of the this question. This is this is this is a real ethical quandary. It is. Uh, this, this is the ethical quandary of our time. Yes. Um, so, uh, but what about the members of the Iberian? Only seven died. The remaining si- what? The remaining sixty-one people on board lived. Several being Americans, and many spoke about it to the newspapers, and not one mentioned seeing a giant sea monster that took out a U-boat that fired upon them. That's a little How bit did, suspect. I'm, am, I'm amazed that only seven people died. That's like... Yeah. That's an impressive survival rate. My guess is the U-boat would have targeted like where the engines are, and that wouldn't mm-hmm. be where people are staying. That'd, just, that'd uh, be more for like, so crew members just, keeping it running. So they, they disabled the ship, that, and then... That, that's my, I don't know sunk. that, but okay. that, my guess is that they would have strategically aimed that, for something to paralyze the ship. That makes sense. Um, that makes sense. And why had von Fosner not written about in this the sh- in the ship's event log? I've never served as a World War I German U-boat captain, but if I had... I, are I, we sure about that? I haven't I, seen... I haven't seen the documentation that you haven't. That that's I can't prove that I was never a World War I German U-boat captain, and Mm -hmm, for mm -hmm. that i must apologize yeah Um, you can't prove it so it could have happened but if i was an infinite universe if i was one and my boat had been sunken by a sea monster i would perhaps have written it down a little bit well maybe Maybe. he didn't want to be viewed as crazy (laughs) um also the event the the ship sunk so maybe he didn't have time to write in the event log it, it it the ship didn't sink it sank it did sink, but eventually, um, it like it took so long that they were able to wait until the next day to be rescued. <laughs> on top of the like the world's slowest sinking, um, it's like the scene from Austin Powers where the guys like ah! uh, getting run over by the forklift. <laughs> exactly, yeah, it's, it's yeah. exactly like that. Um, interesting related to the story is uh, the company Scottish Power, an energy firm. So what does a Scottish energy company have to do with the German U-boat, you may ask? Uh, Literally everything. While they were laying undersea cables, they found the wreck of a German U-boat in the location that the Corupsis said they had uh, captured Von Forten's crew. So while the sonar image does not show enough detail to see the condition of the foredeck, it does show a suspiciously intact U-boat it doesn't necessarily look like it was just destroyed by a sea monster. Um, I don't know. That front end is pretty crumpled. Yeah, but that could just be aging. They weren't laying. This is years later. pretty crumple. Um, they were laying some pipe. They were. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so now the question turns into if the story about the sea monster is a fabrication, why make it up at all? I'm certain that. Being in enemy waters during World War I is a perfectly reasonable excuse to give a superior when asked why your U-boat sank, and far more believable than a monster got it. Um, a monster got it. Yeah, a, I mean, a that's, my ex- it. That's, that's my excuse anytime I can't get something done at work, is like, oh no, it was just, it was just the computer gremlins in the wires. It's, the computer gremlins did it. Computer gremlins have screwed me so hard. I've gone through so many hard drives. So no, so much. I'm on like how I, I I kill about one hard drive a year. I I I've, need to know, and I've gone through four full computers. So Brandon, I have a few questions. So there's a few statistics that in I need like to know. eight years. <laughs> how many read writes do you do per year? Uh, what do you mean, like like read writes full hard, hard drive, drive transfer? Drive. Um, well, no, 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 no. So like individual transactions against the hard drive like yeah. how many of those are you fucking doing a year and are they is it an HS, hdd or is it an ssd these are all very important questions okay. that our listeners care about so th- they, they can of course they do um the first six years it was a hard disk drive the last two mm-hmm. years it was a solid state drive all of which i've just killed um i struggle to understand how you do that 
they well one they're buying the cheapest hard drives they can um and th- that's are you p- sure it's not fi- is is it not is it being destroyed by internet porn it is not because i would because have to do I that remember- on the company network I remember you did destroy a computer with internet porn once. I did. I did. I, that's, that, see, that's before I, I started getting better at using computers. A lot would argue that I'm dog shit at it. Um, <laughs> but there is one time when I just had an, an uncontrollable amount of uh, dicks going into butts on a computer like the background everything it was just all dicks and uh, there was nothing to do about it so my mom had to pay the it guy at work to come over uh and get pay him with a six pack and a pizza to please get all of these dicks off my son's computer (laughs) too many dicks too many dicks and then i thought too many dicks i should learn how to troubleshoot (laughs) (laughs) too many dicks too many dicks <laughs> um it's the sequel to too many cooks a far better sequel um ah uh, it's a questionably better sequel it's they're all everyone is unique they're all very unique they've like there's i mean other than the serial killer everyone was unique on in too many cooks yeah but in this one like every dick like there's normal dick there's extra veiny dick there's uh suspiciously smooth dick there's um I forget the word, but when they get all bendy, they, there's a couple of those. They oh, bend the bent a, carrot? The, the bent carrot one? Yeah, they bend in different directions. Um, the, the, well, there's the bent carrot one, the the one that there's, like, an ad for. Have you ever gotten that ad? I have not gotten that ad. Oh, my God. There's, like, a, there's a, like, there's an ad for a treatment for that bent carrot. Yeah. Dick. Which, one, there's a um, medical term for it, and two, that's a, it, it, it requires surgery. Uh, that, that ad is the a scam. only. T- the only reason I call it a bent carrot dick is because they literally use a, a bent, bent carrot, carrot <laughs> to, to describe it. And I think the website is like bentcarrot.com or something like that. What? Like, uh, one sec, one sec. Like, it's... Let's let's destroy your search history. Peroni's disease, it, that's well, what is... it is. It's it, Peroni's... Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's what it's called. Um, urologist gesturing to bent carrot that represents Peroni's disease. Uh, actor portrayal help reduce the bend. Help with the bump. Help. Yeah, yeah. It's oh zyflex.com. Oh. They they actually oh wow they actually have this like accessibly program this website because that wow that, this seems legit that, actually. So so I want to point out the like Google thing says you're all just gesturing to bent character that represents Peroni's disease actor portrayal. So. That, that, like, text there, that's for screen readers. The like, actor portrayal? For, for, well, the, the thing that, that very first bit of text, you're all just gesturing to a bent yeah. carrot that represents Peroni's disease, that's for, like, vision-impaired people who use screen readers. It will automatically oh. read that. Oh, wow. Huh. Yeah. Look at this. Look, all right, so I guess if y'all have some uh, listeners, Peroni's, Go to peronidisease.zyflex.com. There you go. Get sorted. Um, or just search bent carrot. Or just search bent carrot. Or if your partner likes it, who cares? I mean, it doesn't not bothering anybody. I mean, it might it might be painful. It could. I don't know. Yeah, there's like there's like plaque in the penis, so like it's like scar t- tissue. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you can feel it. Huh. Interesting. All right. So more than two hundred and fifty thousand doses of Zyaflex have been distributed. I like how, so there's a picture of a bunch of dudes and then in the bottom left hand corner it says actor portrayal. <laughs> yeah, they, I don't know if there's like a bunch of like the Peronis of um, Kingston Club or whatever. Imagine, imagine you like, so that that was definitely people who signed up for um, they signed up for for whatchamacallit. Uh, they, 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 they shot pictures for Stock photography. Oh right? yeah, yeah. Imagine, imagine if you're like just go like you have somebody who's like just checking out bentcarrot.com because like they saw the ad like we are right now, and then they see your picture there, and it's like, oh, <laughs> yeah. That's why one of the many reasons uh, you should be careful of going to stock photography is you could just be using porn ads. 
Mm-hmm. A lot of porn ads. Oh, a lot of them. Mm-hmm. Also, mm. you can be used in, like, uh, problematic imagery. Yeah. <laughs> it's very possible. Uh, like, incredibly possible. Uh, so, at the end of World War II, Allied forces captured uh, the entirety of German naval records from 1850 to 1945 and saved them to microfilm. Did you know that, like, there is a, a half-life? Like, microfilm needs to be preserved properly because, like, microfilm is, like, slowly going bad, I feel like I heard. Everything is slowly decaying, and there's nothing yeah. you can do about it except try to make it decay even more slowly. Um, which is why, that's like, that's why I have two hard. That's why I have a, a RAID system on my hard drive that stores all my important documents, which is mostly anime. <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. I remember. Did you used to have like a second hard drive just for porn? That was like, or am I thinking of somebody else? I think you're thinking of somebody else. There was somebody else who had like an extra hard drive in their computer's case that wasn't plugged in just for porn. And that, so that it was inaccessible. That, and that wasn't me. That wasn't me. That I, I did have a, a folder on a second hard drive, but I oh, never, I never had unplugged a folder it. Buried within everyone a folder, had a folder. Just named yeah. something inconspicuous. If my memory is correct, mine was, so I made a, I edited, I modded my PSP back in the day. <laughs> and if my memory is correct, the PSP mod folder is where it ended up. Like hidden underneath all that shit. I think I hid mine in like the app data folder and just named it something that sounded also like a computer file. Um, do you remember in in middle or high school and like kids were like cutting out the the like Pokemon cards are a laminate of two pieces of card stock with images printed on each one. So kids would cut out the square of the image of the Pokemon on the first sheet remove it, and then glue in f stuff from a... Porn used to be on magazines. Um, and they glued yeah. that in there. I remember hearing about that, but that never... You know what the funny thing is? Some of those cards probably... Some of the cards that they did that to are probably worth, like, a, a little lot bit of now. money now. Probably a lot now. Yeah. Well, they probably weren't doing it to hollows, I assume. If they're... Mon well, then no. again... And then I also remember they got caught with porn. just, like, a fat stack... Like two decks worth, and then like they made uh, like an announcement about that. So there's a there's a dude in this area who plays magic, and he plays with a fuck ton of proxies, and it's all anime titty girls, and I hate him so much. <laughs> that's silent. I, I that, haven't uh, since since Omicron like that's so good. happened. I haven't been playing magic as much. Like I stopped going to Commander Nights, but yeah. like. I remember, like, he was, he's also a CDH, CEDH player, which is competitive EDH. Yeah. So, like, he's already miserable to deal with because he's, he's a competitive player. And he also has a bunch of anime titty. That's so funny. And it's, funny. like, super, it's super cringe to play against. Yeah. Like, that's and that's so coming bad. from me. That's coming from me, who back in the day had a deck that I called Waifu Tamers. <laughs> because I because I built it around the Crimson Dancers from, uh, or whatever the fuck they're called, from Cardfight Vanguard. Because yeah. I liked their aesthetic. So I called <sighs> it Waifu Tamers as a joke. I can't wait to play cards again. Oh. That's fair. Soon. Apparently there's a good Yu-Gi-Oh game. Soon. Soon I will be playing cards again. Just got to get this when, baby all her shots. And then I'll be playing yeah. so many cards. <laughs> I just, I'm I, I'm waiting for Omicron to quell a little bit more before I get willing to. Fucking Neon De Brandon, there's a new Kamigawa set and I'm so excited. But, but my favorite Planeswalker got completed. And if you don't know what that is, um... In Phyrexia, you're completed if you're turned into a fully, like, non-organic thing. Oh! Tamio got got. Did she? She got got. She's the first Phyrexian Planeswalker. Oh, God. Yeah. Oh, I gotta get I, back I, But you know what the problem is? Uh. I don't know if I'm mad, because it's the most fucking cyberpunk thing ever to become non-organic. Yeah. This... 
Yeah, this summer I'm having a nerd's night. For sure. <laughs> for sure. Are you going to get chairs finally for your your uh your 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 expensive table? <laughs> I still don't have chairs for my expensive table. Um I will buy bar stools <laughs> for it. Um I did get a nice outdoor set. My neighbor had like this big whatever. I've got like a big foldy umbrella and a nice little outdoor spot too. Mm, okay. I did some in- nice. some improvements. Um, oh, it's got to be a nerd night, though. Uh, I actually bought more modern decks, and then baby. <laughs> oh, you were talking about the EDH ones? Uh, yeah, I remember you buying. Them. Oh, I I bought um EDH and regular pre builts. Oh, okay. But I got, uh, I'm dying for a nerd night. But I just gotta because she ain't got no none of them immune disease. Gotta get her. Yeah, shooters. that's fair. I, I, my, my sister had a kid recently and I haven't gone to see it just because like, I'm like, even though I'm, I've quarantined most of the time, yeah, well, I'm like, even like co- there's, COVID aside, like, she, 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 yeah, there's like, she there's just various shit yeah, that I could have. She hasn't discovered that she has feet yet. You know, we don't need her getting sick. <laughs> yeah. That's usually not great thing. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. She's adorable. She will laugh as she's pooping and it's terrifying. Um, <laughs> I do too, though. So is, <laughs> that's a different story. Is that a lot? To, like, let's go back to the microfilm. Is that a lot to go through? Yes, but not too much <laughs> for a retiree and naval historian named Dwight Messimer. And of course, it's a Dwight. It's always a Dwight. It is always a Dwight. It's always a it Dwight. It is always a Dwight. Um, he compiled U-boat losses and, and published them. And in his presentation, he included interviews with four members of our U-boat in question. In his account, Hello. Uh, Kretsch, the captain, uh, recalled how he decided to crash dive the U-boat after he spotted uh, Royal Navy patrol boats. The navigator reported the conning tower hatch closed, he said, but as we went under, uh, heavy flooding occurred through the hatch. Now unable to close the hatch, did you read ahead? You're reacting like no, you read ahead. No, I didn't read ahead, but I see where the I can see the ending of this story. It's so good. Oh my god! Now unable okay. to close the hatch, the submarine was clearly in trouble. Water poured from the conning tower into the U-boat, causing the pumps, batteries, and electronic motors to fail. Uh, to make matters even worse. Uh, or even more dangerous, the air was starting to fill up with chlorine gas emitted by the flooded batteries, which meant the crew were either going to drown or be poisoned to death. Uh, the, the only option... Imagine... Imagine fucking up that terribly. That... Fucking up that hard. Uh, like, like the level of fuck up that this is, is next level. It's amazing. The only option was to surface, and quickly, Crench ordered the ballast tanks to be blown, and the U-boat rose slowly. However, that did not mean the crew was safe. Senior stoker Julius Kotschammer <laughs> uh, reported that we opened the watertight door into the control room and managed to make our ways against the in-rushing water um, and exit through the conning tower. In fact, it's Gottschimmer who held the key as to why the water had managed to enter the boat from the conning tower, and he lays blame squarely in Kretsch. Because before you read this, the way submarines work, all watertight sealed rooms. So if any one room yeah. floods, it doesn't take over the whole submarine like this did. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Gottschimmer said Kretsch had insisted on the installation of a heater in the officer's compartment. He said cables to power it had to be run into the control room through the conning tower, compromising the ability to be completely sealed. The result was that the new cables allowed water to flow unhindered from the conning tower, said Gottschmer. Then there we have it. There was no sea monster. The captain wanted his own personal heater, so he had holes drilled through the wall connecting the main entrance and the control room, which allowed water to freely enter the vessel. Are you fucking kidding me? This when I found this, I was so giddy I couldn't wait. This is the dumbest shit. It's so good. Holy fuck! It's, that is so fucking stupid. It's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. Um, most articles I found stop at uh, the sea monster story and don't dig any deeper. However, my new favorite article. Uh, that that did do the deep diving and found the information about the microfilm is titled 
Mystery of the World War I U-boat and the Sea Monster Solved. How a bungling German captain sank his own vessel after demanding a heater in his cabin and then blamed the leak on a creature of the deep. By Guy Walters. <laughs> That's kind of magical, I'm not gonna lie. Oh, uh, it's so good. Like, that's that's a little wonderful. Oh, God. I, I love it when people, like, lie outlandishly because they fucked up so, like... <laughs> fucked up the hardest. In, the like, hardest fuck like, up. How do you fuck you up so bad you sink your own submarine? Like, Ugh. that's such a fuck up. <laughs> like, submarines are designed to be basically, like, in that regard, idiot proof. Because, like... The point is, it's supposed to seal as soon as possible. Like, you're supposed to seal it so things don't get fucked up, right? Yeah. Like, you're not supposed to leave, like, portals between different sections open and shit like that. Because, like, if you do that, you die. Yeah. Like, there's hard fuck-ups. And, like, the extent... I'll explain after we stop the extent to which he fucked up and why there's chlorine gas in the air um i don't think i can say it on a public forum <laughs> because of the compact oh, okay okay i think i i think i see where you're going There's, i guess i don't want to give up how our submarines work but he fucked up so hard by drilling those holes I think I think technically that's how all submarines work, but I can understand what you're trying to well, say. I don't know about all submarines. I know sp- about some of our specific submarines. <laughs> how do you fuck up that bad? Like it's so bad. I, like I I fucked up bad, right? But like like I I nearly got run over my own by my own car, right? Like that on the like whole scale of things, that's a pretty bad fuck up. Yeah. Right? Like like there there's no question I did a dumb I did a dumb fuck up. But like I still didn't fucking sink a submarine. <laughs> it's so good. Like I'll be the first to tell you I done fuck up a lot. Like Yeah. It, it it's being an adult like, is fucking up. But he, like he had to find a way to get the say the submarine sank, but with it not having taken any fire. He, but like, but here's the thing: he invented damage that wasn't there. So why not like, just say it got hit by something? I mean, yeah, that's the thing, right? Like, why not say that? Like, like he invented damage to the boat. Like, like literally, he could have said that the ship was damaged by debris from the ship, the other ship. Right? So, yeah. like, what I thought was going to happen was it was going to be something from the ship that they shot, like, landed on the, the boat. Yeah. Because, like, that's a reasonable thing to say. Yeah. Right? Like, but, like, how bad of a liar do you have to be? It's, ah. Uh, and here's the thing. Wait, well, presumably he got away with it because... Like, he went so, like, it was one lower-ranking person made a comment about it in an interview. So, presumably, he didn't get in that much trouble, and I think he conti- he continued to do more missions afterwards. Like... But, like, but like how do you... I would love to be a fly in the wall up? and when he's making that up, like, and telling his superior about, like, like a sea monster, and then also be in the room when they go, listen... We know it's the heater because you wanted a heater. You drilled holes. <laughs> but like on the submarine, like how do you? I'm just like struggling with this one, right? Oh, like I was like, so happy the whole time I was writing this. I I want to make funny jokes, but like I'm just like confused. <laughs> like. He lived. The dude lived until 1942 as well. Yeah. Oh, he might have been one of the problematic. Oh uh, yeah, he Germans. might he might have turned into one of the problem. He, ones. I think he turned into one of the problematic Germans. He yeah. would have been 58. 
or so. Yeah, fifty-eight. Yeah, he was older. He was fifty-eight he was old around that time. Problem. He yeah, he might have been one of the problematic Germans. Yeah. Okay, so maybe he's more problematic than uh, as the boy who li- <laughs> as far as the boys who lived go. Yeah. I think he might be more problematic. Yeah. yeah. All right. So she's. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I didn't know how long he was alive for. So she's got that going for her. <laughs> she's less problematic than one of the OG Nazis. He was 33 when he fucked up this bad. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, I could see myself fucking up this bad too. Um, but the sea although monster. I don't know. But the sea monster, like everybody fucks up. The thing is, I would have. Oh. There's so many like ways he could have made it not seem like a f- complete bullshit story. Yeah. Like 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 I said, like saying that the debris from the other ship hit you would have been like okay. Would have been enough, yeah. It cuz like okay, we're we don't have any technology that's going to be able to go down to the 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 bottom of the ocean and verify that. So like I'm going to yeah. take your word for it. Cuz like <sighs> But they literally forgot to close the door to the submarine, and then the water got into the submarine that was with new holes for his new heater. Well, what he did was he created the Polish submarine. The first he he actually beat the Polish to their invention of the screen door submarine. You see, there. Ah, uh, I wish MythBusters was still around so they could do a a flex seal screen door submarine. Oh my god, that would be so good. It'd be such a good episode. It wouldn't hold for it would it would hold probably for a little bit, but there would probably be like like it, it would probably be like less than an atmosphere of extra pressure before yeah. it folds. As long as there's like a shit like you need some support to keep the the actual screens from caving, but you could probably get it just underwater. Yeah. Oh yeah, you could. I mean, it's it's just it would cave under like any pressure. Yeah. And there's a lot of pressure. <laughs> yeah, like that reminds me of uh the of Futurama where um uh Fry asks how many how many uh how much pressure can this take? And uh the doctor's like uh Farnsworth is like Well it's a spaceship, so one. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh God. Um, that was a short one. Yeah, it what was, a fucking hilarious one. It was hilarious. Listen, I wrote this with a baby on my lap. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> well, There's I mean, be a couple I actually shorter ones. I vaguely remember looking this one up and being like, "That's super short." It it is until you start getting into the little nitty gritties, and then the little nitty gritties is this amazing. Oh, that's it is fucking hilarious. Like, like Mr. Bean the captain. Do not get me wrong. It's fucking hilarious. Right? <laughs> like, it is absolutely Mr. Bean. It's like Mr. Bean and Mr. Magoo had a child. Yeah. And this is the They had a they had a, a a child who most likely became a Nazi later in life. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's, that's basically what happened. Which, if Mr. Magoo and Mr. Bean had a child, I do imagine that it would be a Nazi. There's, although I will say, if there are going to be Nazis, I'd rather them be Mr. Beans than anything else. I mean, a lot of them kind of were. Yeah. A lot of them today kind of are, too. Yeah. Yeah. But you see the problem, though, Brandon, about Mr. Bean is Mr. Bean somehow always makes it through and yeah. achieves the thing. Oh, do you see the the head of the 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 Oath Keepers showed off his like yes! secret tunnel to escape the Feds, which means now the Feds know about his secret tunnel. <laughs> it's fucking great. <laughs> It's so fucking funny. It's so good. Oh my god. Imagine imagine thinking that was a good idea. Yeah. I I don't have to cuz they clearly did. <laughs> Inconspicuous edit here. You'll never know what it's about, but John made this sound. Oh. <laughs> oh. So where do we do we start from the top? <laughs> Yeah, we're starting from the top again. Um, 
So in terms of plugs, our uh, our podcast is found. At, you found the podcast, you so like it. you don't have you to win. Look, Congratulations, you, you win. We don't have to tell you where to find it. But our website's cryptopediacast.com. Our Instagrams at cryptopediacast. So is our Twitter. Um, if you want to email us, it's cryptopediacast at gmail dot com or us at cryptopediacast dot com. We have a YouTube um, that I recently reworked entirely. Um, and there's like a bunch of vid, all the videos for all the episodes are now up there. So, um, with a fun little animation, you've got some little secrets little hid- hidden on the there's, YouTube there page. There are, there are several secrets hidden on the, on the YouTube page. So if you explore around a little bit, you'll find a few little jokes that I made that I didn't get Brandon's approval before making, but I made them anyways. <laughs> That's fine. Um, there's going to be, uh, so the, the auto captioning should be enabled in all the videos as well right now. Um, I'm going to try and clean those up over time and make them a little bit better, but like it's decently accurate. It's gets, it it definitely gets names wrong, especially because we get names wrong. Yeah. Oh, it's going to have fun with the Von captain guy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, uh, Brandon, do you want to thank our patron levels, our, our Jackalope level supporters on Patreon? Yes, so thank you to our Jackalopes. Uh, you mean, you mean more to us than just the a name at the end of the, uh, the, the podcast. We, we, we love every single one of you. Um, so thank you to Clay Sinclair, Marty Von Party, Bird Schneider, Jonathan Shepard, Matthew Smith, and Bushcraft Kelso. Bushcraft. Bushcraft. His his uh Instagram's pretty cool. If you ha- aren't following it, um, I recommend it. I think it's literally just Bushcraft Kelso too. Yes, yeah, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Um, uh, we have a Facebook group that sometimes things happen in. Uh, we have a Discord where clearly, if you've listened to this episode, you know about the Discord. Th- things happen in it's, it. It's it. I talk about something from the Discord for like the first ten minutes of this episode. So like. It's in the show notes. Um, if you enjoy the podcast, be sure to rate, review, and subscribe. Um, send any monster requests or stories, things along those lines. I'm a little conflicted about the fact that we're on Spotify right now, but we already cut a whole section of this podcast because <laughs> because I I wasn't sure if what I said was correct. So I'm not going to even begin <laughs> to dive into those waters. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, you can find me on Instagram at donkey underscore hands. My website is boyerb.com. My email is brandon at cryptopediacast.com. And my Twitter is at crypto brandon. On Instagram, I'm at mu2057. My Twitter is at JF Dunham. My website is johndunhamgames.com. And my email is john at cryptopediacast.com. Our art was done by Tom Hill. You could find him on Instagram at Thomas Michael Hill. His website is greatergloryco.com. And his email is uh, tommikehill at gmail.com. As always, I'm John. I'm Brandon. And things are going to get weird.